Hey guys, my name is Jeff and behind me is a 2000 Range Rover 4.0 that is finished in Chawton white over a walnut leather interior. And we're gonna be taking a look at the exterior, obviously the engine bay, the interior, and just generally overview everything and a little bit of the history. And the best part is if you guys like this vehicle, it is actually for sale as well. So I will post all the links below to where this vehicle is for sale so you can check it out for yourself if you're interested in purchasing it. So with it, let's get into it. All right, so this is a 2000 Range Rover 4.0 with the 4.0 being the engine displacement, which we'll get into more later. The exterior is finished in this Chotson white, which we mentioned earlier, which looks absolutely gorgeous. And this vehicle would have set you back $59,000 back in the year 2000. But there's a couple cool things about this specific P38 or second generation Range Rover, which we'll talk about as well. So being a year 2000, that means it's also part of the facelift, which messed uh, around with the exterior as well as the interior a little bit. And we'll talk about those changes as we go through them but the second gen Range Rover was also really unique in that it was the last Range Rover available with the famous Rover V8 and it was also the last Range Rover which was fitted with the Connolly leather on the interior which we'll show more later so that's a British leather uh, supply company that obviously some of that started to change a little bit more with the change of BMW's ownership but we have this car in front of us today and we'll be walking through some of the different changes including this body. So one of the cool things about these is they feature a mostly steel frame construction, but everything features a double zinc coating throughout the car. So obviously that's going to help prevent things like rust and make these fairly sturdy vehicles coming in at around a whopping 5,000 pounds. But there are some cool details. So the fenders, the doors, and the rear hatch as well are actually all aluminum on this vehicle. So you won't have to worry about rust on any of those either. And what a just durable looking vehicle this is. So some of the changes that happen on the exterior for 2000. In the front, we got more paint. So they started to do more paint matched bumpers, which could be changed depending on trim levels. And then we also got this little front spoiler was added as well. As we come around to the side, we also got the new alloy wheels. So these alloy wheels are 16 inch lightning wheels, as they're called from Range Rover. And the second generation also included anti-lock four wheel disc brakes all around the vehicle as well. Now, these cars would have originally come equipped with air suspension but that has been switched out in favor of coil spring suspension for this one so you don't have to worry about old airbags which can sometimes be a little bit dodgy so they had an atlas system which was supposed to help with four-wheel drive stuff and it could even be lowered for ease of getting into this because they are a little bit taller you do have plenty of ground clearance on this guys it was intended to be a british refined luxury vehicle which could also go off-roading or on your farm over in england so that's why it's a little bit taller could be raised up with the off-roading airbags so another thing that would have been changed is the mirrors as well so these would have been updated sort of streamlined a little bit more for 2000 and they would have had the addition of electrochromatic now there's some more changes on the interior, but we won't get too far into that until we move into the interior section. And then as we come around to the rear, which of course we mentioned is aluminum as well. Range Rover, of course, by Land Rover. So there you go. That's essentially a quick look around the exterior of the vehicle. So now it's time that we pop the hood and see what's going on in the engine bay. So under the hood of our 2000 Range Rover is our four liter Rover V8. And this is a naturally aspirated all aluminum V8. And it was actually based off an American engine. So Rover went to the US and found something called the BOP engine, which stands for Buick Oldsmobile Pontiac. And then they then roverized it in their words to turn it into something that would work for their vehicles. And it was considered a huge improvement over the previous Rover V8s. So what we have in here is it's a four liter and it was updated for the 2000 model year the biggest change being the Bosch fuel injection system, along with an all aluminum sump and even some rocker cover changes. And then this little intake in the back here is also known as the Thor intake for the updated uh, engines. Now, in this case, the engine's producing somewhere around 188 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. And despite the fact that this thing weighs a whopping 5,000 pounds, this thing could actually cruise to 0 to 60 in around 11.1 seconds with a top speed of around 115 miles per hour. But this was also a full-time four-wheel drive. So it was made into a four-speed transmission that would then have the transfer case with two speeds. And then this thing would be able to cruise off-road or through your farm field at any time, making it a fairly versatile off-roader. 
Now the EPA rating for this would be about 13 miles per gallon city and 17 highway. So not the most fuel efficient thing on the planet, but this is an older V8. So that's not terrible when you look at it that way. And of course you get the beastly full-time four wheel drive with that four speed automatic transmission. Now, some of the other cool benefits is this thing has a massive gas tank. You're looking at a 24.6 gallon fuel tank. And if you drive uh, horrendously terrible with a lead foot, you can still get over 300 miles of range. And if you're a little bit more polite to the vehicle, then you can get more range than that out of your Range Rover. So with that, let's go ahead and move to the interior and see what's going on in there. Okay, so now we're on the inside of our 2000 Range Rover 4.0. And as you can see here, we have our awesome walnut leather interior, which as I mentioned, is actually made by a British leather company. And that would be the last time you would see that in a Range Rover. And it has a very specific smell to it. That's a really fun. If you're familiar with Range Rovers, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And then in true British fashion, we also have all of this wood finish along with the leather. So it's very clear that it's a luxury vehicle from the get-go. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 2000 also featured some interior changes. So I'll cover those first. The first would be the actual gauge script and some of the other designs here would be changed. In this case, we have kind of a fun green with some yellow and white that is fairly standard, but has a cool sort of vintage classic look to it. And the second, which is probably the most important, would be the cup holder upgrade. So over here, it's a rest when you have it down, but you actually flip it over and you can have access to your cup holders, which flip all the way around, which is a pretty cool feature if you want to use them that way. But that's a pretty cool change. Not something that everybody would assume would come in a facelift, but I guess people can complained enough that they decided to update the cup holders. So let's talk about all the other buttons we have going on here in our command center, not to mention our little Range Rover logo in the center of the steering wheel. So as we take a look here, we have a Land Rover clock, which is very nice, a nice reminder of who built the vehicle. And then we have some controls for what would have been that original airbag controls that we talked about, but we don't want that temperamental system in here. So it's been upgraded here with the coil springs as well. And then we take a look, headlight display, and we have some of our different radio and HVAC controls controls here in the center and then we get to the H shift pattern which again is designed this way specifically for some of our different speeds and the fact that we have our two speed transfer case and full time four wheel drive along with some driving modes including a sport drive mode in case you were curious in going for a sporting drive with your Rover V8 powered Range Rover. As we take a look at the center here, we have all of our window controls and everything for all four doors, including even some of the back hatch access and disabling things if you have some people in the back that you're not worried about, which are shared with the passenger seat as well. So pretty cool look in there. But more importantly, because this is a luxury vehicle, you also need a luxury sound system. So these are equipped with a Harman Kardon sound system, as you can see here, and that would have been a 300 watt 12 speaker sound system that would have been fitted in the car as well. So you can bump tunes as you please. And we also have a nice little roof there along with the back seat, which is a fairly sizable back seat at that and really good visibility. The fact that this car from period reviews at the time actually was received much better than some of the other components. Cause when this vehicle came out, it actually came out in a very competitive stage in the two thousands. We started to see the emergence of all these other brands now producing SUVs. And so what, what used to be relatively, uh, you know, low competition between Broncos and Jeeps and even some of the other uh, Range Rover stuff that existed was now filled. And this car was still getting better reviews than even the Lexuses that we now see everywhere today that would have been going against it at the time. It's amazing visibility. I can understand why people would use these for Safari vehicles. So with that, that's going to be a quick look at the interior, which is very British, very awesome in the fact that you get leather and so much modern stuff that you don't even find modern vehicles. I mean, we have electric uh, adjustable seats on both sides. You won't even find that modern vehicles. This is a lot of quality that you get when you check out one of these Range Rovers. Okay, so with that, that's gonna be the end of the video, taking a quick look at this 2000 Range Rover 4.0. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're interested in purchasing this beautiful conditioned Range Rover for yourself, I will have all of the links below so you can check it out. Go check out the listing and see if you would like to purchase this for yourself because these are very unique vehicles. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, we're the last of a lot of cool features that Range Rover is famous for before it changed into what we know of today as the BMW, you know, owned by something else, kind of a shell of its for herself. So a very cool automobile. Um, if you enjoyed the video, could hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. And consider getting subscribed for more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching.